Okay, for all you garage inventors out there that are trying to sell CDs and you're paying uh, a couple of hundred dollars for a uh, machine or you're renting it for whatever you're renting it for every month and you're only getting 15, 1600 CDs to refinish and it takes 30 seconds per application. This is a um, a juicer of all things. I'm going to convert this to a disc refinishing machine. And uh, 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 I don't know if there's so many different. This is a Juice Man Jr. that I picked up at a, uh, a garage sale for seven dollars. And I, it turns on, it's a little noisy, but uh. And I don't know how long it's going to work, but um, what I'm going to do is you can see these this black line that I painted. This has to stay on so that the sides of it have a, a trigger in place that prevents it from being turned on without being clipped like this. So I'm going to... A lot of my tools are put away, so I just happen to have this old soldering iron laying around. And I'm going to use it to, uh, to just kind of trace out the line that I want to cut it from. So we'll, we'll just melt this around here. Okay, well, um, I, I tried melting it, and then I tried cutting it a little. Then I remembered that I have a, um, an old Sears Dremel. And it has these little cutoff wheels, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and and cut it around with this. So I can get it to go in there. Oh yeah, there you go. Man, that works very well. Alright, so we're going to put this on here. It's unplugged, so we definitely don't want to have a problem with that. And, uh, and we'll just trace it around. So, button the noise, we're going back to cutting. going to have to do some cutting from the inside, but I think that's working out very well. It's not pretty, but it's going to work. Alright, so I'm just going to cut that section out. Now, to get the other part. Okay, we got uh, got this part off. I don't think we'll need that anymore. And uh, so far, this is the access that we have. I think what we're going to do now is we're going to try and trace around the top here, cut down here, and uh, go around this way. But um, I want to try and leave as much strength integrity to this plastic part because this is what's going to be. Uh, the protection as well as be able to activate the switches to uh, prevent, you know, that keep it from starting. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug it in and just kind of give you an idea what kind of speed this thing has if you haven't seen a juicer before. <laughs> and uh, it's, got, uh, it's got the switch on, on uh, where is it? Oh, over here on this side. All right, and uh, it spins pretty quick. And uh, what kind of really gave me the idea was that this little, there's a little nub right here. And if you put a CD on it, there's, uh, that's where it'll sit like that. Now I'm going to have to cut away a little bit. I'll, I'll 
kind of use it like a lathe and I'll use a, a, a tool to, to kind of shape this button here so that the disc will sit down on top of it. And um, I'm pretty confident I could drill a small hole in here and uh, run a tap down into it and use a uh, plastic nut or a plastic screw or something to screw it down with a little washer on top to keep it from uh, from flying back out. You know, maybe something like this, you know. And, uh, and that should do all right. And then all I have to do is figure out where and how I'll be able to get my my hand in there somehow or a tool of some sort to um, to be able to to buff the CD back and forth and uh, I'm thinking it should be pretty quick uh, what I was using before and it worked very well actually is um, this this here uh, this buffing wheel in my in a drill is kind of makeshift and uh, anyway <laughs> not not my normal mode of operation for doing things it is kind of like just seeing if it kind of works and and what uh, what I'm what I'm gonna have to do to change it if I just wanted to see if if, if a, uh, a cotton buffing wheel or whatever it's made out of actually actually did the job and it, and it did it did it very well uh, <coughs> pardon me and um, using <coughs> a scratch out or scratch off uh, which is a, a car compound that they use to get scratches out of acrylic paint jobs and uh, and that stuff works really well so let's see what we can come up with all right we got that first part off and I've uh, I'm about ready to start cutting the the top out. So here we go. And uh, as it cuts, it melts, so it kind of fuses back together a little bit. And so we're working with that too. cut through and, and I'm gonna leave little bridges so that it's not flopping around after it breaks loose. Okay, you see where else it's uh oh, over here. <clears throat> Look at that. This is where it's gonna come up here and, and that'll be a weak point, but I think it'll be alright. can't really do this and and get the angle right so that you can see it so I don't I don't know how well you can see it so I apologize for that Probably a good idea to wear safety goggles when you do this. I've got safety glass in my glasses, so I'm kind of okay. See what else is holding on? And you can see it's uh, melting as I cut. Uh, 
for the more critical part because this is where it holds it down. I don't want to mess that up too much. So this is here, looks like the only spot. Alright, that one's loose. And all we got is these little bridges to cut through. One there. There we go. The CD juicer. <laughs> See how this goes. I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is before I clean this up, so I don't want to spend a whole lot of whole lot of time making it look pretty if it's not going to work so I want to get the down to the functional part first and then we'll come back and then show you some more well I started to um, reduce this nub up here and uh, it's almost there I mean it, it you could force it on so, and uh, I gotta be really careful how much I take off. You barely touch it. I've got a little, uh, a little piece of sandpaper here. I have to leave this on because it doesn't run when it's off. barely touching it each time so I don't get too much off. We got a ways to go. I can't see how much it's taken. I mean it's it's just a a little bit over a hair. like just dust coming off. Because <laughs> if uh, I go too far, I kind of ruin the whole thing. <laughs> it's got to be a perfect tight fit. Because this thing spins so fast, you know. spot towards the bottom. I think actually higher than this part so I got to kind of come in at an angle and then come up. There we go. Okay. Let me smooth it down and I think it'll be all right there. smooth now. Let's see where we're at. Alright, well, run a little bit more than I wanted to. Turn it on. 
Okay. Well, it's spinning pretty true, so it works. It's working. Oh, no, that's good. Yeah. That's good. That'll work. That'll work. There we go. It's not going to fly off. All right, now all I got to do is to uh, come up with a um, some way of holding it down. And that's only going to happen if I drill into the top of this. And I don't know how far I've got to go because I'm sure the the shaft motor goes into that somehow, and I don't know how it comes comes. Okay, I got my battery mostly recharged, and uh, I'm going to try and pick up from where we left off. So what I did was I took this cap off, and it's brass bushing inside, uh, where it slides down onto the shaft. That if the sh if the basket that used to go here jammed for some reason it would be able to spin and not burn the motor out. <clears throat> so um, I drilled a, a, a hole in here and uh, I used the taps, the drill bit size four a quarter 20 tap. And I tapped the hole in there and uh, I had this little knob, uh, this here little guy here. Uh, sorry, that's unfocused, but I had this from uh, from part of a woodworking machine that I had made a uh, router table and it was for a fence and I bought a couple extra ones so I had that laying around it's quarter 20 I had to cut a little bit off the end uh, so it didn't go down and hit the shaft and lift up the, the, the disc here so uh, this is kind of makeshift right now um, well the whole thing is makeshift but uh, I just got this little Teflon washer and that's just to build up the height so it can press down on the on a disc. So what you see here is uh, the double-sided tape. And the reason that's there is uh, I took three CDs that were garbage, no cases or anything, and I sandwiched three of them together and glued them together with CA glue. Basically, everybody knows that as super glue, and uh, put some weight on it, and it uh, it held up very well. And then I got something. I think it's called muslin. It's a it's a material that they use for sewing and quilting, and that's just so that the disc that goes on top of that does not get scratched. Now I'm gonna peel off the uh, the double stick tape if I can get it off. This stuff is really sticky. Um, so we'll take that one off, we'll get that one off, get it out of there, uh, turn that around a little bit, and we'll take this one off. This stuff is, is really, really good, uh, and it'll, I used to use it to put, uh, for jigs when I did woodworking. So this here sits down right on that disc and we'll press it down and probably wouldn't even go anywhere. I mean, I turned it on before with nothing there and uh, the disc just sat there and spun. But uh, now this is one that I, I did before. So I'm going to take and find another one that has a bunch of scratches in it. Just for, uh, you know, for test purposes. Yeah, this one here will do. It's not gouges or anything. There's a couple of, couple of good sized uh, ones in there. Uh, I'm going to, yeah, I don't know if you can, it looks like it's good, but it's, uh, it has, if I can get the right angle and get it into focus, <laughs> uh, Try and focus that a little better. There you go. You can you can see all the way around it to some degree <clears throat> that there are uh, there's there's scratches on it. All right. Uh, 
Yeah, there we go. Uh, that looks pretty bad, right? That's 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 the way some of them come, right? Uh, in the camera, it looks better than what it actually does. Uh, you can't really see too much of the scratches. But anyway, trust me, they're there, all right? So then what we do is we put this on here, okay, and line up that hole to some degree. And I'm just using this Teflon, uh, this Teflon washer to... Uh, because I don't have anything else right now. And then we got to find, find the, the hole there, right? And uh, it does go in. I, I've had it in there before. I'm just at a bad angle here. There we go. That's going down. And this kind of slopping around. That, I'm going to get something with a better fit on it. So you just crank that down, and that'll, that'll keep that... From moving around. Now, I use uh, uh, Formula One scratch out. Oh, let me refocus here for you. Uh, I just thought it was going to be really messed up. So, uh, there's the, uh, there's that. And I'm just going to put a, I'm just going to put a little, one little, that's too much. Half of that's more than enough. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, bring it around here and uh, spin it around and spread this uh, scratch off around the disc. Okay, and um, and that should uh, that's really way too much. But uh, I don't have uh, a final design, if you will, for the part that's gonna actually touch the disc, so I'm just going to, uh, you know, to, to resurface it, like they got those pads, you know, that come with the machines and all that stuff. So I'm just going to use this wadded up paper towel. And I'm going to turn it on so it's going to be a little noisy. can get a, a microfiber cloth or, uh, you know, something else, but uh, I don't know, what are we on there, like 10 or 15 seconds now, right? Yeah, that's close enough. Yeah, buddy. All right, I'll take this off. Just like the big dogs, and uh, and I will I'll refocus again and show you how this thing how it buffed up, and that is that's not bad, not bad at all, really. It came out fairly decent. Uh, <clears throat> I guess I need a better lens on this camera. I don't know. I've never been able to get good close-ups. I'm not a I'm not a camera person, but uh, how did I do it before? Uh, but you can see that um, it doesn't have those, all those pits and scratches in it now. And uh, I'm sure that if you used one of those, those, you know, I'm going to call it a scott Bright, but a scott Bright would be way too aggressive. But they have, they have much finer mesh type stuff. There's uh, uh, something like a Scotch Bright that they use for uh, on stovetops, glass top stoves that will uh, kind of keep shine it up and take the scratches out. I'm gonna I may see if I can find some of them and try that. But uh, so this is the machine that uh, I my brainchild, if you will, and. Uh, as you saw in, in the beginning of the video that was patched in, I cut all the top of this thing off. And uh, it's light, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, and if you, if you want to take it apart, you just 
pop these guys up and they'll fall right off and that's not going anywhere it's double stuff tape on there and uh, so this is the first version of it I'm gonna write it up and uh, the uh, the parts list and the directions and maybe uh, another video I don't know uh, will be available thanks for watching let me know what you think